Now, another thing is that we know they're narcissists. We know they're going to do things that narcissists do. But here's what I think is really important, that we set an expectation and that we want to um, set the expectation that they're going to that they're going to listen. From New Life Ministries, this is Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn. I'm Stephen Arterburn. And Going Deeper is all about taking the tough issues, the hard issues of life, looking a little bit deeper inside so that we can gain some insight into our lives. Hi, Steve Arterburn here. Thanks for joining me for Going Deeper. We're going through the alphabet, and today it's the good old letter N that I've written here in calligraphic form. This N, we just can't do N without talking about narcissism and narcissistic personality disorder. We even have a book, Understanding and Loving a Person with Narcissistic Personality Disorder. I remember working with a narcissist. And narcissists, well, they send, they send you some messages that are all about you, but they're really about them. Why is that? Well, because everything is actually about them or for them. So I worked with this guy, and everybody that worked around me had a PhD. I don't have a PhD. Guess what he would do? He would call me Dr. Arterburn. Well, that felt so good and so wonderful. Why? Because guys like that know how to, they just like they have a sixth sense of what to say or do that might make you feel better to like them more, so then it could be all about them. Now, the best thing that I can tell you when you're dealing with somebody who is a narcissist is this two phrase word or two word phrase that I made up and it's called amused detachment. And so here's what it's all about. If you know the person's a narcissist, don't you know what they're going to do? They're going to talk about them. Don't you know how they're going to be? It's going to be all about them. So when they get going and they're trying to manipulate you or they're trying to make everything about them, you just sit back and you kind of internally smile, you know, because, well, you just don't want to get caught up in it. So you become amused by it. You detach from it. Don't let it grab you. Don't be disappointed when the same old thing's happening. Let it happen. Be amused, not confused or abused, right? Just let them do what they do, but don't let them hook you in. Now, the next thing we've got to realize is this isn't some accident of the cosmos that's happening in this person's soul. There's a reason that this happened. Why would anybody need to believe that the entire universe is revolving around them or exists just for them? Because they'd be compensating for something. What? What would they be compensating for? They have a wound. It is a deep deep wound. It leaves them feeling sometimes like they're nothing or empty or wandering and lost. And so how do they deal with that? They make everything about them because of the wound. And the, the bigger the narcissism or the larger that we see them, the grander that they talk, then the more we can expect that that wound was really, really hard and tough. And sometimes we can ask them questions. We don't tell them, I'd really like to know about that old wound you got down there that's causing you to be so difficult or impossible to deal with. But what we could do is ask them this, hey, tell me about when you were growing up. You remember anything really tough? What was the toughest part? And a lot of times they don't want to even look at that. How do we know that? Because rather than look at it, and deal with it and resolve it, they got all this narcissism that's compensating for the wound that still exists. But you might ask them, what was the toughest thing about growing up? What do you remember were the big struggles? Tell me about mom. Tell me about dad. Who produced the most pain in your life? Those are, those are some things that you know might help you get to whatever that really deep, dark, horrible wound 
is. And once you know about that wound, you go, wow, no wonder this person is struggling so much. So we might ask questions that help us better understand the hurt, the trauma, the wound that leads to all of this self-obsessed behavior. Now, next thing is while we're detached and amused, we also at the same time can remind the person of or bring them back to an awareness of reality. And so let's say you're married to a narcissist and they go over uh, to a party with you and it's all about them. They're yelling or they're telling loud stories, getting all the focus on them. And then they walk out and go in the car and say, um, boy, that was great. I loved it. Why'd they love it? It was all about them. They took over. They were the center of attention. So here's a reality reminder. Hey, yeah, I'm so glad you had a lot of fun. You told a lot of stories. You did a lot of things. You know, one of the tough things about tonight was is that I discovered that Mary is dying of cancer or Bob has been left by Julie or whatever it is. So you start talking about some tough, difficult things that happen in the reality of your world and they start to sense, wow, I'm missing that. I didn't see that. I didn't know that. No wonder people don't really share stuff with me. That's, I mean, they think I'm acting like I don't care. Well, I am acting like I don't care because if you gave me any more pain, I just feel like I might collapse. So reminding the narcissist about reality can sometimes help them see what's very difficult for them to see, which is their own uh, behavior and the offensiveness of it. Now, another thing is that we know they're narcissists. We know they're going to do things that narcissists do. But here's what I think is really important, that we set an expectation and that we want to um, set the expectation that they're going to that they're going to listen. So we might say, well, I, yeah, that's such a great story. Uh, you told me that twice last week or whatever. But yeah, I love that story. But I'm going to ask you to listen to me. I'm going to ask you just for a second to hear what I've been going through. I want to share some feelings with you. And then, you know, you tell them. Not mean, not overly obsessed with your problems, but you you tell them some things that you expect them to listen to. And when you tell them, you ask them, so what does that mean to you? Or what does that say to you? Or what are you thinking? Which causes them, next time you start talking, to pay attention because they now know there's a test at the end. The other thing is that I, I think uh, every person needs to be able to acknowledge their mistakes. Every person needs to be able to out loud confess that I blew it, I messed up. And so you tell them. You know, one of the things that some people think is if I admit I'm wrong or if I acknowledge that I made a mistake, then they're just going to walk all over me. But I got to tell you, you say to the narcissist, anytime you admit a mistake or you say you've been wrong, you go up on my scale and I, I appreciate you more and I want to be with you more the more you're able to see your mistakes and to admit them out loud. That's just a common, realistic thing that you could expect of them. Listen to you, also acknowledge their mistakes. Now, if you're in a close relationship, married, uh, or you've got a child, they're living at home, and, and they're narcissists, then you're going to need some outside help and support. So get that support. You can't do this alone. But also, call us 1-800-NEW-LIFE and get that book, Understanding a, and Loving a Person with Narcissistic Personality Disorder. That way, you come to love them and understand them, and you're not reproducing them and creating more in the next generation to come. So that's narcissism, the end stands for narcissism. But the end doesn't have to create an end to all meaningful relationships. Little by little, you can come to be viewed as a person who actually has feelings, that they can develop some level 
of empathy or at least acknowledgement of the pain that you're in. So everything I've said, if we could just do it, it's going to make it better with that narcissist that you're either living with or that you know. By the way, just because a person is a narcissist doesn't mean we can never ever be married to that person. But before we do get married, they need to do some work. And we need to expect them to do that work and not just evolve into something better. They won't. They will drift into something worse. Well, if you have a comment, you call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE or you could send it to us at newlife.com. Next time, we're going to go into the letter O, and that letter stands for obesity. I don't like it, but I think it's going to be helpful. See you then. Thank you for joining me for Going Deeper. I hope something I've said may have helped just a little bit. If you have a question you'd like me to answer or comment, just email me at stevesocial at newlife.com. I'll see you next time. If you want to support Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn, be sure to subscribe so you never miss another episode. And if you know someone who would benefit from this episode, be sure to share it with them. See you on the next Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn from New Life Ministries.